President Obama. We sat down yesterday afternoon, a packed day filled with news on the Pope, North Korea, and cyber attacks. And with the president just back from a budget meeting on Capitol Hill, I began by asking how he would overcome Republican opposition to new taxes by going around GOP leaders or rolling right over them. I don't think it's to break or go around them. I think it is to identify what I call the common sense caucus, which says uh, we can do sensible deficit reduction with a combination of entitlement reform, some judicious spending cuts, closing some tax loopholes that nobody really defends on their own. And that's what I've been talking about for the last that, two years. That common sense caucus on the yeah. Republican side, Lindsey Graham, Kelly Ayotte, other Senate right. Republicans say they're going to need to see a lot more entitlement reform yeah. from you before they can sign on to any new yeah. revenues, like putting, raising the Medicare eligibility age back on the table. Is that back on the table? Well, one of the things that you know I've discovered in some of these dinners, which has been uh, useful, is that people don't always know what I've actually proposed. And it's a lot easier to have a conversation when there's something specific. But even the ones who've seen your plan say they need to see more. Well, I, I understand, uh, which is why at some point I think I take myself out of this. Right now what I'm trying to do is create an atmosphere where Democrats and Republicans can go ahead, get together, and try to get something done. But ultimately it may be that uh, the differences are just uh, too wide. If their position is we can't do any revenue or we can only do revenue if we gut Medicare or gut Social Security or gut Medicaid, if that's the position, then we're probably not going to be able to get a deal. Paul Ryan today put forward his budget, right. and he says he's challenging you to come forward with a budget that also reaches balance. Are you going to do that? No. Uh, we're not going to balance the budget in 10 years, because if you look at what Paul Ryan does to balance the budget, it means that you have to voucherize Medicare, you have to slash deeply uh, into programs like Medicaid. My goal is not to chase a, a balanced budget just for the sake of balance. My goal is how do we grow the economy, put people back to work, and if we do that, we're going to be bringing in more revenue. If we've controlled spending and we've got a smart entitlement package, then potentially what you have is balance, but it's not balance on the backs of you know, the poor, the elderly, students who need student loans, families who've got disabled kids. You've been taking a lot of heat for this cancellation of the White House tours. I guess the Secret Service says it costs about $74,000 a week. Was canceling them really necessary? You know, I have to say this was not uh, a decision that went up to the White House, but th what the Secret Service explained to us was that they're going to have to furlough some folks. What furloughs mean is, is that people lose a day of work and a day of pay. And, you know, the question for them is, you know, how deeply do they have to furlough their staff and is it worth it to make sure that we got White House tours if it means that you got a whole bunch of families who are depending on a paycheck who suddenly are seeing so no a 5 or 10 percent uh, reduction in their pay. Well, what I'm asking them is, are there ways, for example, for us to accommodate school groups? Uh, you know, who may have traveled here with some bake sales, can we make sure that uh, kids potentially can uh, can still come to tour? Your Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, told Capitol Hill today for the first time that North Korean nuclear weapons and missiles pose a serious threat to the United States. So can North Korea now make good on its threat to hit the United States? They, they probably can't, but we don't like margin of error, right, and when it comes to uh, it's that close? Well, and I don't think it's not that close. Now, what we've done is we've made sure that we've got defensive measures to prevent uh, any attacks on the homeland, and we're not anticipating any of that. Let me stay in the region because James Clapper also today talked about cyber attacks. Put yeah. that at the top of his list of threats right. to the United States. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, uh, Mike Rogers, said that we are at war with China because of their cyber espionage. They're winning that war, and their government and military is behind it. Do you believe that? Well, I think you always have to be careful about war analogies. What is absolutely true uh, is that we have seen a, a steady ramping up of cybersecurity threats. Some are state-sponsored. Some are just sponsored by criminals. But some are state-sponsored. Absolutely. And this is why I've taken some very aggressive executive actions, but we need Congress to act. We've made very clear to China and some other state actors that you know, we expect them to follow international norms and abide by international rules. And we'll have a, 
some pretty tough talk with them we already have. One more question. While we're here, yeah. a lot of eyes on Rome as yeah. the cardinals prepare to pick a new pope. Yeah. And for the first time, some American cardinals on the list. But what I wanted to ask you about, there seems to be some concern among Catholics that there shouldn't be an American pope because that pope would be too tied to the U.S. government. Hmm. What do you think of that? Uh, it seems to me that uh, an American uh, pope would uh, preside just as effectively as a Polish pope or an Italian pope or uh, uh, a Guatemalan pope. And not take orders uh, from you? I don't know if you've checked lately, but uh, uh, the Conference of Catholic Bishops here in the United States don't seem to be taking orders from me. Uh, I, my hope is, uh, based on what I know about the Catholic Church and uh, the terrific work that they've done around the world and certainly in this country and you know, uh, helping those who are less fortunate, uh, I I is that uh, you have a, a, a pope who sustains and maintains um, what I consider the central message of, uh, of the gospel. We treat everybody uh, as children of God and that uh, uh, we love them uh, the way Jesus Christ taught us to love them. Well, I'll be watching for the white smoke. Mr. Absolutely. President, thank you. Good. Thank you. And you can see more of my interview with President Obama tonight on Nightline. He was very direct. He was. And maybe those White House tours coming back, at least for kids. Well, that, that was a spring break coming up mm -hmm. and all that.